welcome to an inspirational teaching by our guest speaker, Ivan Raskino. We hope you enjoy this teaching. Well, day before yesterday, there was an uh, announcement in Fox News about uh, a SETI program. SETI is Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. In other words, Search for Aliens. All right? And this program has been going on under different names for the past uh, almost a uh, hundred years. And they're searching for aliens. All right? And a lot of money has been put into this program in the past 20 years, even by the U.S. government about 100 million US dollars. So they are serious about it, right? And so if you look into the, uh, Google it, and you will find a lot of information about it. SETI, all right, S-E-T-I. So day before yesterday, the chief of SETI, uh, her name is Dr. Natalie Cabro, said, you know, I'm sure there are aliens around. But we haven't got the technology to connect. We are trying to connect with them, but we can't connect with them. And so many mil hundreds of million US dollars, or a hundred years, they've been trying to contact aliens. Now, I don't know the, all the instruments that are there. It's something known as radio telescopes, and I really have no idea what it is like. But you can have a look, and there's a big, huge, huge antennas and, you know, things like that. And probably they must have sent the satellite up also searching for aliens. And this satellite might be going zoom for 100 years, zoom, and they can't hear the aliens, right? Zoom, zoom. And everybody watching them, trying to figure out, <clears throat> well, but just imagine that suddenly they did contact some aliens. Can you imagine? <sighs> anyway, putting that aside, I'm using that example. I'm using that example because we want to connect with God, right? And God is out there, right? You want to connect. And we don't want to be like SETI. We want to actually connect with God. We want to actually hear Him. And today, I'm going to talk, I'm taking a series on prayer. And I'm going to start with our Father. And this word, our Father, I'm going to take a few sessions on that. Just our Father. Because prayer is connecting with God. You have to connect. Actually connect. We must not be like SETI. Zoom. Like that. Unable to connect. Unable. We want to connect. With God. And so it's going to take some time. And I'm going to take a few sessions. Only on our Father. Only on that. Because when we connect with God. Then prayer flows. Very easily. It just flows. Because you're connecting. Otherwise, you're just talking into the air. Right? Just talking into the air. And we don't know whether we are connecting or not connecting. And uh, so, so this session is entirely about connecting with our Father. And so it's our Father. It's not only my Father. It's our Father. So will you just repeat, our Father? Our Father. Yeah. It's our Father. Right? We want to connect with our Father. Sure. Connecting with God is one way. It's only one thing. You require faith. Faith connects with God. Right? No amount of radio signals, radio telescopes, or satellites will ever make you connect with God. It will be silent. But faith, you can hear God and you can hear the orchestra of heaven. 
the orchestra of heaven the music of heaven all the music which is in revelations in the book of revelation you can hear it when you connect with god with our father you know to connect with the faith means a simple confidence a childlike confidence in what god says in the promises of god just a childlike confidence and i'm going to talk about this childlike confidence giving you examples right so martin luther said god and faith belong to each other that's it god and faith you can't connect with god without faith right faith in him okay you know nicodemus came to jesus he came from the night from the night he came to jesus and he spoke to jesus and jesus told him unless you're born again you can't even see the kingdom of god and he said how can this be he was always making questions always asking how how can this be how can that be and then what happened he went back into the night see in the book of john it's very symbolic light and darkness and so nicodemus comes from the darkness has the opportunity of meeting the light of lights unfortunately did not connect and he went back where into darkness he went back into the night i hope he got saved afterwards but at that moment he did not connect from the darkness he came to the light of lights and went back into darkness he became a city unable to connect and we want to connect we we want to connect with the light of lights we want to connect with him all right now you know i got when i got born again i had a beautiful experience of god wonderful experience but you see i came from an engineering background and all i knew was to work hard and i worked so hard and when i became born again i used to get up every morning at quarter to 4 for years quarter to 4 and spend my time with god and i used to fast and spend my time with god but you see what i was driven by i was driven by hard work and hard work unfortunately does not connect with god faith does but i thought you know that's my lifestyle my lifestyle was to work hard and i worked hard for 5 years i kept on working hard trying to make sense of this christian life and my wife also got born again at the same time and my wife does not work hard like me but she had faith and so when she said i found people falling under the power of the spirit people getting healed people getting delivered and i had to play the organ but i was not connecting with god i went into darkness i went into hell i know that i know that for 5 years i struggled and worked and worked and worked and then one day i got fed up i got fed up and i gave up and i said god i'm going to trust you and bang the presence of god came into my life and you know after that i learned a lesson i need faith and all i have to do is to trust god as to trust and i found the presence of god in my life you know and praise god for that i want to give you some stories where i want to encourage you to come into our father's presence because when you come into our father's presence prayer flows like that it just flows it's not difficult and you want to come into the father's presence so i'm going to lead you to a few examples 
and believe me it is about not about me it is about our father right i can't help giving you those examples but it is not about me it is about our father all right so so some years ago you know about 15 years ago i can't remember when i had gone to uh, uh london uh, i used to minister in a church which uh, uh, you know andy matheson uh, his church and i knew andy matheson very well he invited me to his church and i went there to minister over there and from that from that time onwards i began to minister regularly in that church for the past 15 years whenever i went to london so last time i went you know 15 years ago i went to london and there you know was one young girl who came to me for prayer and she was probably in her teens or something just a teen, very young girl simple girl and he came to me and says you know pastor pray for me so i said okay what can i pray for you she says you know i don't know whether god loves me now i happen to know her parents and her parents are godly parents and i know they brought her brought her up uh, 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 giving her a familiarity with the, with, with the bible so i said oh so i said i so I told her, I said, uh, do you believe the Bible? She said, she said yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't know whether God loves me. I don't feel his love. All right, I said. I said, do you believe that Jesus died on the cross? Yeah, yeah, I believe, I believe. Uh, and I said, uh, uh, how many people was Jesus crucified with? Were there others? Yeah, yeah, there were two others. One this side, one that side. I said, you're right. In fact, all the four Gospels talk about Jesus being crucified on the cross, and uh, there were two on one on other, either side of him. I said, "You're right." I said, "Do you actually believe that happened?" She said, "Yeah, I believe." I said, "You know that same Bible also says that Jesus loves you. That same Bible, and He died on the cross because He loves you. That same Bible." And I showed her some scriptures, and I can't remember what scriptures I showed her. But she believed it. And when she believed, she connected with God. And she got born again. You know, she connected. See, faith, she connected. She connected with childlike faith in what God did for her on the cross. You know, I really can't remember the scriptures I Told her. 15 years ago is a long time. But I want to tell you something, which I said some, year, some months ago. In fact, last year I said it. I talked about the zeal of God. And I talked about that, you know, when God created the universe, He just said, Let there be light. Bang! The whole universe started. Boom. Like that. You know, and when He wanted to create man, He took some dust. Phew, we were all, man was created. Poof. That's all it took God. That's all it took God. The Bible says also that, you know, when he, want, he, when he wants to drive away the devil, he said, Phew! by the breath of his mouth, wham! I mean, look at that power. Look at the mighty power of God. Like this. But when he wanted to win your heart and my heart, he didn't do it like that. For centuries, he formed and won the hearts of a people known as the Israelites. And if you read the Bible, there were absolutely people with finicky faith. You know, up and down, and they deserted him, and they left him, and, but he had the patience to go after them and woo their hearts. He, did, he didn't do it like that. He took the patience, patience, centuries of patience, and eventually he sent his son, Jesus. And his son came, and he was born in a manger. And then he lived, and people spat on him, and they whipped him, and they put him on that cross with a lot of blood, with a lot of sweat to win our hearts. He didn't do it like this. You see, 
he went on that cross for your sake and my sake and all he tells us just believe in me just put your faith in me have a childlike faith that that's exactly what i did for you and for me that's all he's asking us to believe in him and that's faith and you see that young girl that day with whatever scriptures i showed her she just put her faith in that and bang bang she was born again and she knew that she was loved by god she knew it and she went away happy 5 years later i go back to that same church this time with my wife and this young girl comes to me for prayer comes to us for prayer same girl so i said hi oh the first time when i prayed for her and i told her i said all you have to do is to believe you know what she said cool you know oh yeah oh that's cool so i remember that word it's cool you know anyway so after five years she comes and i said oh remember what you said last time you said no pastor you said it's cool she laughed anyway so i said what do you want me to pray for you she says you know i went to this ministry and i know that ministry it's a world famous ministry and it's a wonderful ministry and that senior pastor is a wonderful man of god and she went for that ministry there and there were people who were praying for her in that ministry and one of the one of the prayer ministers told her that you have a dead spirit so you know that broke my heart to tell this young girl you see i want to tell you something and i'm very glad that pastor victor and ann they take a lot of time to train their prayer ministers but every single person whether you're a parent you're a mother you're an uncle or aunt whether you're in the ministry it doesn't matter you're a person of authority and from your mouth should come words of life not words of death because when you give a word of death like what this young girl got it hurts a person and puts a person right down so this young girl was put right down because someone told her you have a dead spirit and why did they say that to her it was not from god they said that to her or that person said that to her because maybe she was frustrated that she can't find the presence of god or something like this or something like that but just said you got a dead spirit and so she came and told me she says you know i went for that ministry and they told me that i got a dead spirit oh, my heart broke so i had to now minister to this young girl and bring her from that place to a place where she understands the presence of god now i want to tell you some something that happened to me years ago you see from the age of 25 i had migraines migraine headache i used to be a hot tempered highly strung over sensitive guy and that tension made me have migraines so from the young age i had migraines and once i used to have migraines maybe once a week or something and then it increased you know virtually every day and eventually it occurred you know, virtually every few hours and this horrible headache the throbbing headache you know and i was actually becoming a vegetable with this headache i could not operate and what i used to do was i used to practice a certain method of relaxing i used to sleep or sit down and concentrate right from my toes right to my head concentrate relaxing so i would concentrate relaxing that gave me some comfort but it did not take away my headaches but when i was born again the peace of god flooded my heart and the migraines left you know uh, and it left and it came back for a short while but then it left permanently and i have not had migraines for years and years right so i understand what it is to relax because i practiced it for a long time 
No, I, I'm telling you this. But, you know, what I'm going to tell you is what I told this young girl. And two men of God said the same thing. Uh, one was John Paul Jackson. He died recently. He was, a, he was a mighty man of God. And the other one is Bobby Connor. Both of them I have met. Both of them have said the same thing. So I know that what I told this girl was not Eastern mysticism. It was something that people can use. And you can use it too. Because men of God have also uh, endorsed it. Now, what I told her was, put your hands up. No, you don't put your hands up, all right? Tell, I was telling her that, so you don't have to keep your hands up. So I said, put your hands up. So she put her hands up. And I said, concentrate on your fingertips. So she said, okay. I said, I said concentrate, all right? So she concentrated on her fingertips. And, and I said, what do you feel? And she said, I feel some tingling sensations on my fingertips. I said, good. I said, you're good. You're feeling, now you put your hands down and concentrate on the presence of God that he loves you. Because you know what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 17. It says, he who unites with the Lord is one spirit with him. That's God's word. That means if you're born again, you're one spirit with God. We're going to talk about this verse more, right? You're one spirit with God, all right? So I said, just concentrate because you're one spirit with God. Now you're going to move into the spiritual realm, okay? You're going to believe in this verse. Believe in this. Do you believe? Yes, I believe. I believe in this verse. You're born again? Yes, I'm born again. Good. And if you're born again, Romans 8, 9 says, if anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But you belong to Christ, so you have the spirit of Christ. Right? And so if you have the spirit of Christ, you're one with Christ. You're one with God. Now concentrate on them. So she put a hand on and she started concentrating that God is with her. And what happened? She felt the presence of God. She felt the presence of God. She, I said, do you feel the presence of God? She said, yeah. I said, of course. Because you have got childlike faith and you're trusting the scripture. Right? You're trusting the scripture. You're, and you're finding the presence of God. Good, I said. Now, I'm going to say something more and I told her about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and I began to show her scriptures and I said do you believe these scriptures she said yes childlike faith I said now will you just breathe in the Holy Spirit and breathe out by faith in tongues and she did that and she broke into tongues and the presence of God hit her and she got drunk in the spirit now, what I mean by drunken the spirit was that like this. You know, in the day of Pentecost, the apostles, the spirit of God fell upon them and they started coming out, staggering, and people said, they are drunk with wine. He says, no, 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 we are not drunk with wine. The spirit of God is upon us. And this is what happened to her. She was staggering. She was staggering under the presence of God and bursting in tongues, not knowing what she's saying. And she was filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, childlike faith, you connect with God. Just childlike faith, you connect with God. And this is what took place. And I said, okay, I'm going to leave you here in this room. My wife and I said, we're going to leave you here, and we're going out. You just enjoy God. And so we came out, and her parents, they were very anxious because uh, about this dead spirit. You understand? So... They came and they said, what, what happened? What happened? What happened? I said, don't worry. She is with the Lord. No, 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 no. What happened? You know, Indian parents, British parents are the same. They all get anxious. You know, what happened? What happened? I right, take it easy. She is with the Lord. Right? She's filled with the Spirit. Okay? So, that took place over there. You know, all you require is childlike faith. And you can connect 
with our father. I'm going to go further. I'm going to go further. Then what happened was many years later, now she's a full grown woman. I mean, I don't know what age. And I went back to Tunbridge and she came to me again. But this time she's in the ministry. Right? She's serving the Lord in the ministry. She's gone for training. She's gone for schooling, Bible school, and this and that. And she's now ministering. So she just came to say hello to me. I was so happy, you know, to see this. I've seen her for 15 years. I've seen her for, you know, over the years, her development. I was so happy to be in some part, you know, of that development. So... I said, how are you? And she was telling me all stories and this and that. And we were laughing. And then she says, do you have a word for me, Pastor? So, you see, what happens with me is that I practice the presence of God everywhere I go. Because I'm one with the Spirit of God. That's the Bible says, I believe in 1 Corinthians six seventeen. He who is, unites with the Lord is one spirit with him. So wherever I go, anywhere I go, I am one with God. And I am always aware of that fact. So I sat on with her, <laughs> looked at her, and suddenly the Lord spoke to me. And says, I have got great pleasure in this girl. And he showed me a picture. So I said, you know, the Lord has great pleasure in you. Oh, she's thank you. I said, no, 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 not thank you. He has great pleasure in you. He says, thank you, pastor. No, I said, I'm going to tell you something more. I'm going to tell you that every morning you go into a field of daisies and you prance before the Lord. And God sees it. And he has great pleasure in you. And she almost wept because that's exactly what she does. Every morning, there is a field nearby, and she goes uh, into that field, and she prances like a young girl before the Lord. Quietly, nobody there, but the Lord saw it, and the Lord showed it to me, and I told her that. And she almost wept. And I know, you see, my brothers, it's not that I am a gifted guy. He's our father. All right? And you can connect with him by faith. That's all. I want to encourage you that he is what? Our Father. And you're one in the Spirit with our Father. You know, connecting with our Father is anytime, anywhere. And I practice this presence all the time. All the time. Why? Because that's what the Word of God says. He who unites with the Lord is one Spirit with Him. He doesn't say only when you come to church, only when you pray. It's every time. You're one in spirit with God. I can tell you many stories, but it's really not about me. It's about the Abba Father. It's about Him. All right? So I'm giving you another story. And I got hundreds of stories, really. Once, you know, there was a friend of mine. I mean, he, he, he knows a lot of politicians. And he's a Christian. And uh, he wanted to meet one senior politician in Mumbai. So I was with him. He says, Ivan, what are you doing? Come with me. So I said, okay. You know, I, I'm not interested in politicians or something. So anyway, he was there. He went to this, polit uh, this politician's office. And, you know, in, in the senior politician's office, he, there is a big table over there and he sits behind the table and there are about 15, 20 chairs and about 15, 20 chamchas. You know what's a chamchas? They're all brokers, they're political brokers. All are sitting there, yes sir, no sir, yes sir, yes sir. All of them sitting over there and my friend is sitting and I'm sitting right at the back, you know, sitting right at the back and, and there's cups of tea coming, you know, chai was school, all that is taking place and this, this politician, you know, Dispenser of gifts, oh, gotcha. yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that's, that's the air, that's the air, what's taking place in a senior politician's office. And I'm sitting right at the end, and I'm one with the Lord, all right? I'm not intimidated by this big guy, you know. And I feel sad sometimes when I see bishops 
you know, coming to a senior politician and, and begging, you know, for favors. I, I feel so sad because we are one with God. You know, you don't have to go and beg for favors to a politician. We are one with God. So, uh, anyway, forget about bishops. I was sitting at the back and suddenly the Lord spoke to me. And he says, tell this guy that what he's going to do this evening, he should not be doing. So, so I said, okay. So I get up, quietly walk to my friend who was sitting in front. And I said, hey, this is what God is saying. Right? Now this friend of mine knows me. And he has some confidence in me. Right? So he says, he told this guy, he says, sir, you know, in Hindi he told him, you know, my pastor ji, he said something to you. He said that whatever you're going to do this evening, don't do it. This politician just kept quiet. He told everybody to get out from the room. Everybody. All the chamchas, everybody, including myself. Out, out, out. And only my friend was with him. And then he asked this friend of mine, who is this guy who told you? He said, he is my pastor. How did he come to know what I was going to do this evening? He said, God told him. He says, this evening I was going to kill somebody. Now God told me to tell him that. Of course, he didn't do it. But you know, what I want to tell you is this. That you are one with the spirit, with your father in heaven. I want you to understand who is your father. He is a mighty God. He is a mighty, mighty God. I can tell you a thousand stories, but it's not about me. It's about him. It's about him, and he loves you. He loves you. All right? Now, last week, I had come back from the UK, and I know I had to preach this Sunday, and I was grumbling. I was grumbling. I said to the Lord, Lord, it's easier for an ant to speak about an elephant than for me to speak about you. I mean, you're so big. Man, you're so big. Why on earth did you make me a preacher? What am I going to tell your people? I, you're so big, God. Who am I to talk about you? And I was grumbling and grumbling. You know. And my wife knew I was grumbling, but she knew I wasn't grumbling at her. You know. And I dare not grumble about my wife. In front of her, I'm like a puppy. That's all. I dare not grumble at her. But she knew that I was grumbling at God and she knew that God is capable of handling me. So I was grumbling and grumbling and grumbling and I went to sleep grumbling. You know? Because I was empty. I had nothing to share. I was empty. So I got up in the morning. I sat down on the sofa and I was thinking of praying. And bam! The presence of God came. Oh! The presence of God. Because you are one, we are one in spirit with God. The presence of God came. And I began to confess. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then he told me something. Said, Shh. Shh. And he said something I won't forget. He said to me, Repentance is yesterday. I am here today. Repentance is yesterday. I said, oh God. Oh God, he's not, you know, the, this verse came to my mind, Zephaniah 3, 14 to 17. Zephaniah 3, 14 to 17. He said, sing, O daughter of Zion, shout aloud, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your punishment. Out. He has turned back your enemy. Out. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Do you believe that? Never again will you fear any harm. Do you believe that? Childlike faith. On that day, the Lord will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. Don't be, don't, you don't have to be with lack of courage. 
And then he says over here, the Lord your God is with you. He is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. Listen, he's about our father. That's our father. He will quiet you with his love. Repentance is yesterday. Repentance is yesterday. He will rejoice over you with singing. God speaks. But do you know, he also sings. He also sings. Some of you have heard him speaking. I'm going to challenge you to hear him singing. And singing to you. Singing to you. You know, when my son was very small, he would get a bad dream at night. And he would come running da, 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 and jump on our bed. What happened? Bad dream. I said, He's my parents are mighty to save. He knew and he was comforted in the parents' bed. Comforted. And you might have had, all of you have had experience like that. When your parents are there, you're comforted. Because they are mighty to save. And God is mighty to save. I don't know what troubles you have, but you have. But he's mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Just have childlike faith. Like that young girl, young girl in Tunbridge, England. Just have childlike faith. With faith, you can connect with God. You don't have to be like that SETI satellite. Zoom. Zoom. Because you can go like that for hundreds of years zoom, and not connect. But with faith, you can connect. And you will hear the orchestra of heaven because heaven sings. If you look into the book of Revelations, you will find singing, thousands of angels singing in heaven. And you will hear it. You will hear the orchestra of heaven. And above all, you will hear what the Lord himself getting up. And himself singing to you. I love you. I love you. That's the Lord will say that. Because it is true. It is true. You see. He, he died on that cross. For your sake. And my sake. He is our father. He is our father. You know. In the Old Testament. In Numbers 23. 19 to 24. There was this prophet Balaam. Who was called by King Balak to put a curse over Israel. But he could not. Instead, this is what he said. God is not a man that he should lie. Nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? I have received the command to bless. He has blessed and I cannot change it. No misfortune is seen in Jacob. No misery observed in Israel. The Lord their God is with them. The shout of the king is amongst them. When we gather here. The shout of the king is amongst us. And you got to hear it. By faith. By faith you connect. Otherwise you'll be like that seti. Zoom. Like that. It's by faith you connect. By faith. The shout of the king. Balaam saw that. The shout of the king is amongst them. God brought them out of Egypt. Of course he brought us out. They have the strength of a wild ox. There is no sorcery against Jacob. Nothing. No divination against Israel. It will now be said of Jacob and of Israel, see what God has done. The people rise like a lioness. They rouse themselves like a lion that does not rest until he devours the spray and drinks the blood of his victims. That is the strength of the church, my brothers and sisters. We don't have to go to politicians to beg. We will talk about that later. We don't have to go to anyone who begs. We've got the shout of the king amongst us. You know what's this word shout? Shout. Teruah. From Strong's Dictionary. 
right? Seven, three, two, one. It's the acclamation of joy. Acclamation of joy. It's a battle cry. It's a trumpet blowing. That's how God looks at you and me. That is our Father. So when you come to the place of prayer, connect with our Father because that's His heart for you and for me. You have to believe with childlike faith. And then you will hear His love. Then you will connect with Him. Then you will find the presence of our Father in your life all the time. Isaiah 42 verse 13. The Lord will march out like a mighty man. Like a warrior, he will stir up his zeal. With a shout, he will raise the battle cry. And with triumph over his enemies. Now this word shout is another word shout. And this word shout is a whoop. He looks at you with a whoop. Whoop is a sound of joy. Whoop. He looks at us like that. John 15 verse 11. I have told you this so that my joy, my whoop will be in you and that your joy may be complete. That is our father. I want you to know the heart of your father for you and for me. It's not only my father, it's your father, it's our father. When Jesus called us, taught us to pray, he didn't say my father in heaven, he said our father. It's our Father. And our Father looks at you and me. That's His heart. And you want to connect with Him by faith. By faith. Connect with Him by faith. Don't be like that seti. Zoom. For hundreds of years. Zoom. Like that. All right. Anyway. When you connect with Him by faith, His joy will be in you. His delight will be in you and me. And then prayer flows just like that. Because you're connecting with someone who loves you. And prayer will start flowing. Because before you start praying, connect with our Father. Right? Isaiah 56 verse 18. This is what the Lord says. Maintain justice and do what is right. For my salvation is close at hand, and my righteousness will soon be revealed. God doesn't want us to be unrighteous and expect that the grace of God will cover us. All right? So I'm not preaching uh, hyper grace, you know, cheap grace, nothing of that sort. Grace is here to make us holy. Right? Blessed is the man who does this, the man who holds it fast. Who keeps the Sabbath without desecrating it. And keeps his hand from doing any evil. Now, remember, this is the Old Testament. It's from Isaiah. In the, in, in, the book of, in the Old Testament, they were under the Mosaic Law. And the sign of the Mosaic Law was the Sabbath. Sabbath meant that you trusted in God. You trusted in God. That you don't have to work on the Sabbath. You don't have to plow your fields on the Sabbath. You don't have to trade on the Sabbath. But you've got to trust that God will be your provider. Right? So that's the, that's the Sabbath. In the New Testament, every day is a Sabbath. Every day. We have addressed with God that he is our provider. Right? So every day is a Sabbath. Of course we go to work, everything. But we understand that God is our provider. Alright? So, so, then it says... Let no foreigner who has bound himself to the Lord say, The Lord will surely exclude me from his people. And let, let not any eunuch complain, I am only a dry tree. Now, in the Old Testament, the Jews were the people of God. Anybody who is not a Jew was outside the covenant. Outside the covenant of God. So they were foreigners. Right? You and I were Gentiles. And we were outside the covenant. And God brought us near him. And he broke the dividing wall in the New Testament. But, now, the eunuchs. Eunuchs were castrated people. This was not people who were not married. These were actually castrated people. Jews who were castrated were also excluded. That's from Deuteronomy. 
Anybody who was castrated was out. Incidentally, Daniel was also castrated. I also want to tell you that. Right? But by faith, he came close. Okay. But Jews were ca- Anybody who was castrated was out. 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 What I want to say is, you know, sometimes we feel so lonely, so, you know, down, our manhood, people get insulters or whatever it is. But you're not excluded from the people of God. You're not excluded. You're inside the people of God. Right? You're inside the people of God. Let's go further. So to them, I will give my temple and its walls a memorial and a name better than sons and daughters. He's talking about the eunuchs. He said, even if you're a eunuch, I'll make you fruitful. I'll make you fruitful. Right? And to them, I will give my... And foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to serve him, to love the name of the Lord and to worship him, all who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it and hold fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in the house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called the house of prayer for all nations. The sovereign Lord declares, he, okay. So, my house shall be called the house of prayer for all the nations. What does it mean? It does not mean to say that we have to pray for Norway, Sweden, Finland, Argentina, Brazil. That's not the point. The point is that all the nations will be included in the people of God. All the nations will come. Not only the Jews. All right? That's the context. Not only the Jews will be considered the people of God, but the foreigners will be considered also the people of God. People from different, and that was prophetically fulfilled in the New Testament. All the people came and became the people of God, right? And so there will be joy in the house of prayer. That's God's word. I'll give them joy in the house of prayer. House of prayer. Prayer is a generic term for all types of communication with God, whether it's worship, whether it's preaching, what, whatever type, and whether it's actual prayer, there is going to be joy. Four things we can learn from this. Four things. That we as human beings have in us a capacity for joy. All of us have a capacity for joy. Right? On a birthday, we are full of joy. Somebody makes a cake for us, full of joy. This of joy so there's a capacity of joy for us the second thing we can learn is that the religion that we profess that is christianity when rightly understood is a religion of joy okay because in the house of prayer we we'll have joy right? the third thing we can learn is that our father is a god of joy my joy will be in you, and your joy will be complete. Our Father is a God of joy. God of joy. The fourth thing we can learn is our Father is not only one who speaks, but also one who sings. Also one who sings. So these four things we have learned from this scripture. So when you connect with our Father by faith, by simple faith, these four things should operate. These four things should operate. And all you have to do is to connect him. You don't have to be like that seti. You don't have to be like that. I'm going to... He will sing to you. I'm going to bring to you another verse from Hebrews chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. It's about Jesus. But the one who makes men holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers. Jesus is not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers. In the presence of the congregation, I will sing your praises. He's telling the Father in heaven, you know, I will declare your name to my brothers. In the presence of the congregation, 
I will sing your praises. You know, when we worship, with your eyes of faith, believe that Jesus is worshipping with us, according to this verse. When you are worshipping God, Jesus is over there. And I wonder how he worships. Does he shake one of his... Does he do like this? How does he worship his Father in heaven? He worships with all his heart. And in the midst of the congregation, I will sing your praises. That's how Jesus is. So when we come in the house of God, when we come to worship, there is joy. There is joy. We don't have to... <sighs> there is joy. That's the reason why I like to sit right at the back. Because I want to dance. I want to worship. Because I connect with God by faith. Because when I connect by faith, I connect with the God of joy. I connect with our Father. Our Father. He, I connect with Him and He's a God of joy. I connect with Him. Some years ago, my, my brother-in-law, my, my wife's younger brother, when he was a young boy, he had wax in his ears, you know. And slowly his ears, he could hear less and less and less, and he got used to it. Till one day, the wax became so much that his ears started to pain. And he says, you know, my ears are paining. And his mother took him to the doctor. The doctor looked, he's got wax. And with a small instrument, took out a big ball of wax from year and year. And when the wax came out, he was telling me, Ivan, I, I was hearing for the first time. And such a lot of noise I could hear. Because I, my ears were blocked for all these years and I didn't know it. In my case also, I had cataract for so many years. And my eyes were becoming dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. And I just took it for granted that that's how life is. Then I went for my cataract oper operation and my cataracts came out. And for the first time in years, in years, I can't remember, I saw water sparkling. <sighs> my eyes were dim. My eyes were dim and I took it for granted. My brothers, we don't have to be like, our ears ought to be open. Our eyes can see in the spirit. We can contact our Father in heaven by faith, by putting our trust in him. And then you will find that our God is a God of joy. Our God is a God who sings to us. And every morning when you come, or whatever time you have your prayer time, connect with God by faith and know that he loves you, that he cares for you, that he is a God of joy, that he sings to you. And you will hear the orchestra of heaven. You will hear the orchestra. These days, sometimes, you know, I play around with the YouTube and I like to hear Luciano Pavarotti, Jose Carreras, Placido Domingo, and all these three tenors. And imagine these three tenors, you know, in the amphitheater of the universe, one singing from... Mars, others singing from Vs, and all oh, the amphitheater. I can hear, you can hear, you don't have to worry about those, those guys. You can hear the choirs of angels, and you can hear the booming voice of God saying, I love you. And the amphitheater is of the whole universe. My, my brothers and sisters, that is the way to connect with our Father. That who is, that is who our Father is. Let the years, let the wax in your ears be removed. Let the cataract in your eyes be removed by faith. When by faith you can connect with our Father and you will hear Him and you will be excited about your time of prayer. Amen. Thank you for listening to this message. To know more about us, please visit www.adonai-ministries.com.